There is a lot of blood in the streets at the moment. Cryptocurrencies lost massively in value, 90% or whatever it is, and we can easily drop another 90% or even more than that. So my question today is, are we all living in a crypto bubble where we don't see the inevitable? Is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general going to zero? Please don't turn off just yet, but hear me out and hit dislike then. Hello and welcome to Finance with Excel. Most of my regular viewers know that I am invested into crypto and also used to have bullish views on cryptocurrency. Today I will look into crypto from another angle. Are we all living in a filter bubble not seeing the, all the shortcomings and flaws blockchain technology has? Are Bitcoin only tulip bulbs and will we lose all our money before we discuss all the reasons why you could be bearish on Bitcoin and crypto in general? Remember that I am only producing educational and entertainment content. This is not financial advice. Time for a short recap. Bitcoin lost 70% of its value. Ethereum lost 75% of its value. Believe it or not, you are very lucky holding these cryptos, as most other altcoins crushed even more, often 90% or even 95% compared to their all-time highs. Stablecoins can't hold their pack anymore. The worst case is Terra Luna, where UST and Luna lost all its value. Investors lost billions of dollars in the process. This is not all. CeFi protocols like Celsius are going under. Their business model was to offer high yield on customers' deposits while lending the funds to other investors. Apparently, most of the money wasn't lent to other investors, but invested in DeFi, where they mess up big time. That's why all withdrawals are now on hold and customers can't withdraw their deposits. Crypto companies start having trouble. Most exchanges have huge layoffs, firing like 20% of their employees. BlockFi had to shrink and get emergency loans to survive. Coinbase also let parts of its stuff go. Their stock is in freefall too. Crypto.com is another example firing many employees and also cutting back massively on their previously high cashback rates and crypto reward schemes. I think one major issue is that people, especially the ones investing into crypto, still have not learned their lesson. People are still pumping money into Ponzi schemes recklessly or try to find shortcuts. Get rich quick schemes, so to speak. Many are also throwing money in the market at perceived bargain prices, thinking that this is a chance of a lifetime. Hashtag buy the dip or financial freedom. Or in the words of the Bitcoin CEO, eh, <laughs> MicroStrategy CEO, Michael Saylor. How do I buy more Bitcoin? <laughs> But take all your money, buy Bitcoin, then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin, then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that, you're, that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth, which is Bitcoin. In media, we often hear very bullish statements and about the endless potential of cryptocurrency and why it is the future. However, what are the negative sides? What is really going on? Many more things are happening right now that have the potential to suppress crypto prices for the long term macroeconomic factors not looking great either stocks are down too it's not just crypto real estate could be next inflation is sky high meaning that households have less disposable income to use for investments 
Yields in crypto are often, maybe even in general, unsustainable. I mean, compare it with regular yields and you will wonder how the fuck Celsius was able to pay 10% or whatever it was on USD stablecoins. Most of the yields in DeFi are also just artificially paid by token issuance. If you take into account the inflationary effect of the token issuance as well, yield farming often becomes minus EV, has a negative expected value, so to speak. This is even more true if you take other idiosyncratic risks into account too. There is a lot of fraud, namely rug pulls, hacks and other scams in crypto. This is further enhanced by no oversight and lack of regulations. Anonymous teams and founders make matters even worse. Another issue that could hold down prices or even suppress them more is the interconnectivity of everything. Things don't exist in isolation anymore. Everything is intertwined and connected. When Luna collapses, it might drop down others with it. Celsius and Three Arrows Capital might have been invested into UST, which causes them to fall too. These are connected to other players and that's how a devastating domino effect starts, which in the end drags many others with it. Whereby, in the end, half of crypto could be affected and not only just one actor. Rising interest rates also have the potential to depress all asset classes for a long time. If the interest rates are high, it makes other investment classes less attractive. If you can get almost the same expected return investing in safe governmental bonds, many will shy away from risky assets like stocks and crypto too, and instead take these stable yields. A lot of the future price development will also be based on investor sentiment. If the investor's uncertainty and doubt keeps on going, prices can easily fall another 90% from this point. Often people also argue using historic prices. This makes no sense in case of crypto and Bitcoin, as price data for 10 years is not sufficient to make any predictions. So better forget all these models instantaneously and don't listen to the fake gurus using these. Cryptocurrencies are not stocks. They don't give you a share in a cash flow producing business, which normally is generating profits year over year. This yearly profit gives the stock an intrinsic value, which the price should go to in the long run. But how are you valuating cryptocurrencies? They usually don't have a profit generation like stocks. They don't produce anything. Or in the words of famous investor Warren Buffett. Today it's 9,000. Is it still rat poison? Well, it, probably rat poison squared. C cryptocurrencies basically have no value and they don't produce anything. So you can look at your little ledger item for the next 20 years and it says you've got X of this cryptocurrency or that. It doesn't reproduce, it doesn't, it doesn't deliver, it, it can't mail you a check, it can't do anything. And what you hope is that somebody else comes along and pays you more money for it later on. But then that person's got the problem. But in terms of value, uh, you know, zero. <laughs> you can't apply all strategies from the stock market to crypto. Some will work, but not all. There are similarities for managing your emotions, for example. As cryptocurrencies are not cash flow generating assets, you could try to evaluate them based on their utility, but how the fuck do you qualify this? Usually people also don't owe the crypto because of its utility, but because of the potential price appreciation or purely for speculative purposes. Bitcoin, which is peer-to-peer -peer money according to its white paper, is not used for this. Most people hold it 
as an investment, digital gold or a store of value, not to make transactions. In my opinion, you would actually make a decent point if you argue that there is almost no utility besides speculation. Even the often mentioned use cases like NFT and DeFi are actually speculation if you take a closer look. DeFi is decentralized finance or more speculation and NFTs are also almost exclusively for speculation. People buy ape pictures hoping that someone else buys them for more than they have paid. Games are also miles behind the centralized counterparts. The graphic often is terrible and the gameplay very limited. Often games are also just disguised yield farming or in other words more speculation. If you look at the greater picture you will also find that Bitcoin has never existed outside of a very supportive macro environment. The monetary policy during its short existence was always in heavy favor of crypto as the interest rates stayed very low, even below zero in the EU. Shortly after Bitcoin was created, the federal fund rate was basically cut to zero or close to it all over the world. And since then, the interests stayed low and Bitcoin has never existed outside of a low interest environment. Other factors are also very supportive. During quantitative easing and the era of free stimulus checks, a lot of free money was ultimately invested into Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. If we now pull all these supports away, this is obviously an extra risk that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will not return to their old highs anytime soon or maybe ever. There is a chance that cryptocurrency will recover, but it's definitely not certain like some people try to sell you, aka chance of your lifetime buying Bitcoin at 20k only. My advice, manage your risk accordingly and don't invest more than you can afford to lose. What do you think? Are the views expressed too pessimistic? Let me know in the comments. How did you like me playing devil's advocate and showing you all the potential risks? Thanks for watching. Share this to spread the word and don't forget to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Bye. Take care.